During this training video, we are going to give an overview of central venous access devices and demonstrate the practical steps which must be followed to ensure they are accessed safely in our children's emergency department. The devices which we most commonly see are totally implanted devices, more commonly known as portacaths, and skin tunnel devices, known by their brand names Hickman or Broviac lines. Understanding how to safely access these devices means that we can help ensure these patients receive the prompt medical treatment they require. These lines are precious, and infection or complications can be life-threatening. It is therefore vital that we follow a strict aseptic non-touch technique approach and meticulously follow the described steps in this video. Portacaths consist of a central venous catheter surgically inserted into the subclavian vein with its tip lying in the superior vena cava. A chamber at the end of this device is tunneled to lie beneath the skin on the upper part of the chest. They can be single or double lumen. They are most commonly seen in children with complex medical needs who have difficult IV access requiring regular blood tests or repeated courses of IV antibiotics. When a portacath is accessed, a special non-coring Hoover needle is passed through the skin and into the device chamber, which lies below a layer of silicon. The design of these needles prevents small pieces of skin or silicon from being lodged in the catheter line. The size of the portacath is dependent upon the size of the child. This is important because the accessing needle size is specific to the depth of the device chamber. Optimal line tip position on a chest x-ray is at the SVC-RA junction. Skin tunneled lines are central venous catheters which are again surgically inserted into the subclavian vein with their tip lying in the superior vena cava. They are tunneled under and then through the skin with one or more lumens accessible externally. These are most commonly seen in children who require daily or very regular IV treatment, such as those receiving TPN or chemotherapy. Do not use a TPN dedicated lumen for anything except TPN. Optimal line position on a chest x-ray is again at the SVC RA junction. When preparing to access a portacath, start by introducing yourself to the patient and checking their identity. Explain the reasons for accessing their device and ensure you have valid consent to do so. Ask which size portacath needle they normally use and if their portacath has a single or double lumen. This is important since in double lumen devices, both must be accessed and flushed. Please involve the play specialists in our department when performing such clinical procedures and ask the child and parent if they wish to use Amitop or cold spray to help numb the skin. Pediatric portacath access packs can be found in the stacks in the HDU bays of our department. These contain all the equipment you will need to access these devices. Check that the appropriately sized portacath needle for this patient is available in the pack. Additional sizes can be sourced from the support workers if needed. Take a few moments to read through and ensure you understand these key principles. These are, make sure you have the right size non-coring needle for this port. Always follow aseptic non-touch technique. Use 10 mil lure lock syringes only. If the device has a double chamber, you will need to access both. Four mils of heparin sodium, 100 units per mil, is required as a flush if the port is not going to be used immediately. Ensure the 10 mils of 0.9% sodium chloride and four mils of heparin sodium 100 units per mil are prescribed, checked and taken to the bedside. Put on gloves and an apron and then clean a trolley and blue tray with Clinel wipes. Open the items into the tray in a sterile manner. If you are planning on taking blood samples, place the blood bottles in a separate tray with the request forms by the bedside. Keep another chlorhexidine wipe and a needle in this tray for preparing the blood culture. Position the patient on the bed in a semi-reclining position and expose the area. Remove Amitop if this was applied 
and ensure that the site appears healthy with no sign of infection, dislodgement or injury. Wash your hands and apply sterile gloves. Draw up the 10 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride and 4 ml of heparin sodium, 100 units per ml, in a sterile manner. Connect the bionectar to the gripper port needle tubing. Then prime the line fully with the sodium chloride. Clamp and leave the syringe attached. Clean the skin with a checkerboard motion for 30 seconds and allow it to dry for one minute. Use the green drape to cover the area below. Secure the port hub in between your thumb and index finger of your non-dominant hand. Then use your dominant hand to hold the gripper port needle. Insert this at 90 degrees to the skin surface through the port hub in one firm, swift, continuous motion. The needle should be kept perfectly straight and inserted fully until it touches the back of the port chamber. Undo the clamp and slowly infuse 2 ml of the 0.9% sodium chloride. Ensure blood is aspirating well into the line and then clamp it. The additional 10 ml lure lock syringes can be used for blood sampling. 5 ml is taken in the first syringe and this can be used for culture or discarded. Flush the portacath with the remaining sodium chloride using the push-pause technique. Follow this with 4 ml of heparin sodium, 100 units per ml, if the line is not being used immediately. This dose of heparin sodium should be repeated after each future use. Ensure you clamp the tubing before each syringe change using the positive pressure technique. To secure the needle, remove the gripper needle plastic tab and cover with the transparent dressing. If removing, hold gauze over the area and apply a plaster once the bleeding has stopped. Some designs of Huber needles have an inserter with a tab which must be clicked back and the arm lifted to lock the inserter needle into a safe position before disposal. This leaves behind a low profile blunt device in the accessed chamber. Transfer collected samples into the blood bottles and label these by the bedside. After the procedure, ensure sharps are disposed of in the sharps bin, equipment is cleaned down and the administered drugs are signed for on the patient's drug chart. A UHL accessing Portacath sticker must be completed and put in the patient's notes. When accessing a tunneled line, follow the same initial steps as before. Ask which line lock they use. Heparin sodium is most commonly used, but some patients may use other types. Please consider involving our play specialists. Accessing a tunneled line is not painful, but distraction may help keep the child calm and still during this procedure. There is not a tunneled line accessing stack, although all the equipment you need can be easily found in the emergency department. You will need the items shown below. These are a dressing pack, sterile gloves, a chlorhexidine wipe, four 10 ml lure lock syringes, two filter needles, 10 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride, and 5 ml of heparin sodium with a strength of 10 units per ml. Please note this is different to the strength of heparin used when accessing a portacath. Take a few moments to read through and ensure you understand these key principles. These are always follow aseptic non-touch technique. Use 10 ml lure lock syringes only. If the line is going to be accessed but not used again for eight hours, you will need a line lock. This is five mils of heparin sodium, 10 units per mil, 
or another specific patient lock, for example, Toralock. Ensure the 10 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride and 5 ml of heparin sodium, 10 units per ml, are prescribed, checked and taken to the bedside. Put on gloves and an apron and then clean a trolley and blue tray with Clinel wipes. Open these items into the tray in a sterile manner. If you are planning on taking blood samples, place the blood bottles in a separate tray with the request forms by the bedside. Keep another chlorhexidine wipe and a needle in this tray for preparing the blood culture. Position the patient on the bed in a semi-reclining position and expose the area, ensuring the site appears healthy with no signs of infection, dislodgement or injury. Wash your hands and apply sterile gloves. Draw up 10 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride and 5 ml of heparin sodium, 10 units per ml, in a sterile manner. Use gauze to hold the line and scrub the hub with the chlorhexidine wipe for 30 seconds and then allow it to dry for one minute. Use the green drape to cover the area below. Attach a 10 ml Lua Lock syringe and unclamp, ensuring that blood is freely aspirating. The initial 5 ml of blood can be used for a blood culture or discarded if cultures are not needed. Attach a further syringe if blood samples are required, clamping the line between syringe changes. Then flush with 10 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride using the push-pause technique. Follow this with 5 ml of heparin sodium, 10 units per ml, as a line lock if the line is not being used for the next eight hours. If the patient uses a different line lock, substitute this for the heparin sodium. Clamp the tubing before syringe changes using the positive pressure technique. Transfer blood samples into the appropriate bottles and label these by the bedside. After the procedure, Ensure that sharps are disposed of in the sharps bin, equipment is cleaned down and the administered drugs are signed for on the patient's drug chart. Make sure you document this procedure in the patient's notes. The following are frequently asked questions encountered when dealing with central venous access devices. If a central venous access device does not bleed or flush back, it is generally because it's either blocked or displaced. If this happens, stop using the line, take the dressings off, make sure there are no curls or kinks in the line, and try to gently flush it. If it still doesn't flush, try to change the position of the patient with either the arms raised or moving forward, and try to flush the line again. If it still doesn't flush, stop using the line, clamp it, and get an x-ray to look for the position of the line. If on the x-ray, the line is in good position, then it's likely blocked. In that case, please contact the surgical team for further help and management. Displacement of a line should always be suspected if parents present with a history that the line is either shorter or longer than its usual length, or the line is not in a good position on the x-ray. In any of these cases, the line should not be used. It should be clamped and the surgical team should be contacted immediately for further management. If a line appears damaged or leaking, you should not use the line. Stop using the line, clamp the line, as any further use can lead to air embolism or serious consequences to the patient. Uh, immediately contact the surgical team for further management. If there are concerns about line infection and there is discharge from the exit site, please stop using the line immediately, take a swab from the discharge you can take blood cultures from the line along with peripheral blood cultures and refer to the trust policy guidelines for further management. We hope you have found this training video useful. If you have any further questions, please contact us using the email address below. Thank you.